thank you for being with us uh, today. And uh, we're going to be talking about enlarging our territory. And I believe that there is a, an increase that God has for each one of us, that he's constantly moving us forward and also upward and into more and more of his abundance. And so he says that he's going to pour out in the last day, and that's where we are, he's going to pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. And I believe as he pours out of his spirit, then that is his love, his peace, his joy, his abundance. And so I'm ready to receive. And so I pray that you will uh, open up your hearts and ears. And like Florence said, be ready to receive everything that God has for us today. Enlarge your territory. Hallelujah. We're excited about this message today uh, because this is what God wants for all of you and wants it for us. Uh, he's, a, he's a God of increase. His kingdom, it talks about in Isaiah, uh, the increase of his kingdom, mm -hmm. his government, will there will be no end. So it's going to increase and increase. And we're in a kingdom that is everlasting, but it's also ever increasing. Mm, and and the way it increases is if the uh, participants, if the members, if those who are in the kingdom, if we all increase. And so he wants all of us to increase. And uh, Matthew 25, 23 says that if we're faithful in a little, he will give us more. And so mm -hmm. I know that uh, we all want more and more of the Lord. And uh, the title, as Sherry said, is Enlarge Your Territory. And that relates to so many different things. It doesn't <clears throat> just necessarily mean an increase in uh, geographical area, an expansion of that. No, it means in every area, uh, abundance and health and healing and uh, soundness of mind and authority and prosperity and power and uh, all of these areas. So uh, God wants you to increase in every area of your life. And uh, th that's the plan. If we're faithful and little, he'll give us more. It, uh, if we look back over creation, God put Adam, uh, put man in the garden and wanted him to tend it and keep it and uh, wanted him to multiply and take dominion over things and so he from the very beginning he had this uh, vision of individuals expanding their territory and so i want to just read a couple of uh, uh, verses here from genesis uh, at the beginning of the bible uh, that was the plan from the beginning. Okay, so read uh, Genesis 2 and 1, those two verses. Genesis 2, verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. And then if we go back to chapter 1, Genesis 1, 28, God blessed them, meaning Adam and Eve, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and take rulership over it, over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Multiply, expand, uh, take dominion over all of the area that God gives you. And we need to know what our territory is. Uh, you know, from Acts uh, 17, it says that there are pre-appointed uh, times and places and uh, boundaries and God see saw from the beginning uh, your territory and that your influence and how much authority you have he, he knew and he wants wants you to have more and more uh, so the idea here is stewardship if we're stewarding what God has maybe we even start with little things and certainly that's where Sherry and I began we began with little but uh, we steward what we had, and, and over time, uh, it increased. Our Amen. influence increased. Our authority increased. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives increased. Uh, and, uh, when we accepted the Lord, uh, Sherry and I both accepted the Lord as young children, 
And uh, we went along for a, a while, and I would say we were very uh, level, that we didn't expand mm -hmm. much in our spiritual life until we received the baptism With of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And that's when we began to grow and increase, and increase in power and authority and all of that. And God's not finished with us yet. Uh, he wants uh, more Amen. and more. And we're, we're continually receiving prophetic words about uh, expanding our uh, cords and strengthening our stakes. There's new territory. And, and we've had uh, several prophetic words about expanding our territory. And so even at our age, we're still looking for more, uh, more and more, more influence. And I, I'm not talking about being greedy and, and hoarding up things. I, I'm talking about influence mm. and and expansion and uh, expansion of the uh, uh, ministry and driving back evil and opening up uh, things that God has on this earth. And so uh, it's an exciting time. And being with the Lord and following the Lord is uh, what gives you that possibility of opening up new things uh, in the future. And so where you are now is not where you're going to be. Well, I look back over my past, uh, I, I've come a long, long, long way. ways. And I believe that's probably true for most of you that you've come a long ways. Well, when you get closer and closer to the Lord, he's going to take you uh, to new territory, into new areas and into new areas of influence, new areas of authority. And, and so we need to be prepared for it. And the, this message is about how do we move forward? How do we how do we enlarge our territory? Uh, so how does it happen? Well, we see here from the beginning that God put um, men and women, a man and woman, Adam and Eve, in the garden, and He gave them dominion over it. And He said, "Multiply and be mm -hmm. fruitful," and and so all of that relates to expansion. And then the sin came in, and they sinned and. Uh, because of the sin, they were expelled from the garden. But praise God, Jesus came. Amen. And Jesus didn't leave us outside of the garden, but he came He came to restore all things. Uh, Jesus came to undo the works of sin and undo Amen. the works Amen. of the devil. And so let's look at Amen. 1 John 3, 8. And I love this out of the Passion Translation. The reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. So Jesus came to put us back into the garden, uh, into that place where we could walk with the Lord. And that, uh, and not just in the cool of the evening, but any time of the day or night, we can walk with the Amen. Lord. That's, that's where we are now. He's put us back. And uh, in Mark uh, chapter 9, it says, when Elijah comes, but he's really referring to the spirit that was upon Elijah, which was the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, he restores all things. Amen. Amen. And being restored to a position of rulership and authority and having dominion, uh, we've been, we're being restored to the, in these areas. So read uh, Mark 9, Sherry. Mark 9, 12. And he said to them, Elijah does come first and he restores all things. Okay, so this is Jesus talking to his disciples and he's referring to Elijah, but it really so is a reference to Elijah. the spirit of Elijah or the Holy Spirit that was upon Elijah and the Holy Spirit comes to restore all things. Jesus came to undo and destroy the works of the devil and the Holy Spirit's come to restore all things. And then we get to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse 16, and we'll see that we can walk with the Lord. Oh, what agreement does the, the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell among them, I will walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I Hallelujah. Love, I love this verse because just like Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the evening, this verse says that God's walking with us. He's in us. He's among us. He's walking with us. Hallelujah. Uh, Sherry. Oh, he walks with me and he talks with me 
And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Praise the Lord that we can walk with him Hallelujah. and talk with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because everything is being restored. We're under a new covenant, a better covenant. And in this covenant, everything is being restored, even our position Amen. with the Lord. Amen. We can walk Amen. With him. He'll Amen. never leave you nor forsake you. Now, there's three basic points I want to, to make tonight about enlargement. And the first one is we need to uh, be f mindful of the future. See, so many people get caught up in the present situation and the present difficulties uh, they don't think about the future. They don't think about increasing. They don't think about what God has for them. Mm. But, but see, you have a future and, and uh, God has plans about your future. And what's interesting, uh, he's, he's wanting to transform you into the image of Jesus Christ so that uh, in the future, you're going to be uh, better looking and stronger and more and how wiser than you are today. You, he's got a good future for you. That's what uh, uh, Jeremiah 29 11 says. He, he's got a good future for you. He's made some plans for you. And, and what's interesting about God, he's in eternity, but he's also in time. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. So he sees the ending from the beginning. And so he sees you further down the road and he's there with you. And so we need to also have that kind of a perspective. We need to have a perspective like God sees us and we need to see what our future is. And if we have the Holy Spirit, you know, one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to show, show us things, things to, to come. come. That's the future. That's your future. What you're going to look like in the future. You're going to look more and more like Jesus Christ. You're going to be conformed to his image. And you're going to have a power and authority, the power of the Holy Spirit and authority uh, over uh, uh, areas and over communities and uh, different things. And, and you're going to, there's just more. It's more and more. God is adding more and more to us. And we need to be focused not just on where we are and the difficulties we're facing, but we need to see beyond that into what God has intended for us. And because if we don't have a vision of the future, well, Hosea said that we'll be destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, if my, my people are destroyed oh, yeah, for a lack of vision. So they don't know what God is doing in their lives, what he wants to do in their life. But once we find out God has good things in store for us and we need to be uh, in this time period, but also looking into the future so we don't get away from the goal because there's mm -hmm, a goal mm -hmm. and uh, Paul said it best in uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3 and I want you to read this uh, Philippians 3 verses 12 through 14 <clears throat> now that I have already grasped it all not that not no. that I have already arrived or have already become perfect but I press on if I may take so that I may take hold of that which I have taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not regard myself as being have taken hold of it yet. But one thing I do. Now, this is one thing that, that every single one of us needs to do. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead of us. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling of, of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. See, God has a purpose for you. Yes. God has a destiny for you. And that is what you need to be mindful of is that you are not the things that you, you may be going through right now are temporary. They're subject to change. But God's eternal purpose is steadfast and it's there and he wants you to go forward into that purpose and plan. Okay. So 
if we look into your future, you're going to see that you're being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, which means that your identity is changing over time. God is, uh, you're looking more like Jesus Christ, and so you can handle more authority and more power. And, and, and so we need to be thinking about that because that's the goal. The goal is to be uh, in the image of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And boy, he had a lot of power and authority. He still has a, all authority in heaven and earth. And, and so we need to see ourselves the way God sees us as the finished work. He, he started something in your life and he's not going to quit until it is complete. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when I, when I think about Adam, he, he had so much potential there, but he gave it up uh, with sin. And there was never an issue about power. Uh, what, what, what was given up was really that delegated authority uh, over his garden. God gave delegated authority to man. God had all authority and he, he was all powerful. He is all powerful. He will always be, be all powerful. powerful. Uh, and so consequently, he didn't lose any power. God didn't lose any power when Adam sinned. Uh, it was not like the lights in heaven went off because, uh, because Adam sinned. No, there was no loss in power. What was lost was the delegated authority, the authority that God had given to Adam to rule over and take dominion over his area of influence. In particular, it was the garden. And, and so when Jesus went to the cross, the issue was not about getting more power. It was getting all the authority back. That what he had delegated to Adam uh, had been usurped by the devil. And so now the issue is getting the authority back. Jesus went to the cross and defeated the devil and all of his demons. He went to uh, went to hell and and got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And when he arose victorious, he said to his uh, disciples, "All authority, authority in heaven and, and earth, earth has been given unto me." So he had it all back, all authority. Again, there was not an issue of power because the Holy Spirit is the the power of God. And so there was never a loss in power. The devil never gained power when that, uh, the when Adam fell. The, listen to me. The devil did not gain power there, nor did he lose power. There was just no change in him. And so what the Holy Spirit said to me years ago, ascribe no power to the devil. Oh, hallelujah. Some people want to make uh, the devil real big and uh, God real small and think that they're equal. And no, the devil has no power, uh, ascribe no power to him. God is all powerful. If he is all powerful, how can you say, well, the devil has all this power? It, 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 God is either all powerful or he's not. And if he is all powerful, then you look at the devil as if he has no uh, power I mean, and he has no authority because Jesus has all authority in heaven and in earth. And so whatever uh, authority the devil had was because he was, had usurped it from man. Now he might do it again from uh, some uh, person on, on this earth at this time. It, he might usurp their authority. They may turn their authority over him, mm -hmm. but Jesus has all authority, and he gives authority to you and me. Oh, hallelujah. We need to understand mm -hmm. what happened at the fall and what happened at the, uh, at the cross. And Jesus got back all authority. So he could say, all, all authority, authority in heaven and in earth belongs to me. Hallelujah. Okay? So now he's uh, delegating authority to you to rule over the, your area of influence. And so let's think about how do we enlarge our territory. territory. Amen. And Amen. again, it's in all different areas. It's not just a mm -hmm. geographical level, but it's in spiritual, in the spiritual realm, in, in authority and power and all of these areas. That is our territory. Okay, read this first verse here. Okay, in 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, But we all, with unveiled, unveiled faces, 
looking as into a mirror at the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the spirit. Okay, so we're transformed and that's all of us. As we are transformed, we gain more territory. As we become more like Jesus, we gain more territory. So how do we gain territory? Mm -hmm. Become more like Jesus. Look more Again, like Jesus. Amen. Speak more like Jesus. Act more like Jesus. Operate more like Jesus. And you're going to have more, ter more territory, territory to rule over. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Now, there's another way we can get more territory. So that was my uh, the point about how to get more territory was to be more like Jesus, and you'll have more territory to rule over. The second point is you can pray for more territory. You know, uh, there was a man called uh, Jabez, and he prayed about more territory. Now, the interesting thing about Jabez is that his name, when he was born, uh, must have, he must have caused a lot of pain and sorrow to his mother. So his mother called him Jabez, which means pain, pain and, and sorrow. sorrow. Now, he didn't want to be causing pain and sorrow, so he prayed. And so this is, he had a prophetic destiny that his mother spoke over him. And he's going to change things here in this prayer. Amen. And you Amen. can do the same thing. Maybe Maybe some people have said some evil things over you, or uh, maybe you felt like you were going down the wrong road. You can change your destiny. You Hallelujah. can enlarge your territory. Yeah. And the way that Jabez did it mm -hmm. was with a prayer. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's look at his prayer Ooh, hallelujah. in First Chronicles. First Chronicles 14. And I don't know uh, if any of you... Uh, uh, you you can read this and confess this over yourself every single day, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, and Brother Fred yes. has, has has done it as well. First Chronicles fourteen. Jabez cries out to the to the Lord of Israel, "Oh, that you would bless me, that you would bless me indeed, and that you would enlarge my territory." Oh, well, there it is. Enlarge. Hallelujah. He's praying for enlarged territory more territory, ter territory to rule over. Let your hand be with me and keep me from all evil and all harm so that I will be free from pain. Oh, he wants to be free from the destiny his mother Amen. spoke over Amen. him. I don't want to cause pain, okay? And it says, and God granted his request. Oh, so his Hallelujah. prayer must have been in agreement with God's will because God Granted, granted his request oh, and he'll do the very same thing for you god is no respecter of persons hallelujah he doesn't show favoritism he doesn't show partiality you can pray this prayer over yourself amen over your life over your family and you'll get the same results that jabez got amen he wanted amen. more territory and he didn't want uh, the road uh, that he was going down where he was going to cause pain. He didn't want that to happen. He wanted a reversal in his life. He wanted a good ending to his story, not the way it started. Amen. Amen. The way his story started was he was going to cause pain and sorrow, and he didn't want that to continue on anymore. And perhaps you've been going down a road you don't want to continue on anymore. Pray. Pray the Jabez prayer. How can you, uh, how can you change the direction? Ch change your direction, enlarge your territory, pray like Jabez prayed. You know, like Jerry said, we both prayed this over ourselves for, for years that uh, God would enlarge us and Amen. that we wouldn't cause pain. That's we don't right. want to make mistakes. We don't want to go down the wrong road. We don't want to cause pain. Cause pain to, I don't want to cause pain to myself. I don't want to cause pain to my wife. I don't want to cause pain to others. Keep me on the right path. Uh, pray this Amen. prayer over yourself. How can you enlarge your, your territory? Well, you can just in your relationship with the Lord, you can pray about things. Now, when God enlarges your territory, one of the things you need to know is that the enemy doesn't want you to be in charge of more territory, of more of the things mm, of God, amen. or to have a more of a spiritual life. And so he's going to resist. 
you're going to have a resistor there uh, and the devil, and he doesn't want you uh, to live a, a good life, a prosperous life. He's going to resist, and he he's going to send people uh, to you. I, I think about uh, uh, two women that uh, they had lost their uh, husbands in a car accident. Uh, a truck ran. There were two men, and I don't know if they were brothers or friends or mm -hmm. what, but they were in the same truck, and they were going to work, and a truck ran into them and, and killed both of them. And, and uh, there was a big settlement, and they got a, a lot of money. Both of the wives got a lot of money. So both, uh, both of the husbands were dead, but the wives got a big settlement from the insurance. They had a lot of money. Uh, and so I'm just explaining to you how the devil can come. And, and so they had a lot of money, both of them. Uh, and, and so one woman just held on to what she had, and you can't imagine the relatives that came out of the woodwork yes. wanting things yeah. and asking like little roaches. Oh, they just, uh, people maybe she didn't even know about, but once they heard that, that she, she had, had the money, money, oh, they started coming around and presenting all these needs, and there was no end to needs. You cannot be led by needs. There is no end. Oh, hallelujah. No end to needs. Yeah, wait just a second. There's okay. at least five that are viewing this video. That is a word from the Lord for you. You are not to be led by the needs of people, but you are to be led by the Spirit of God. And when we opened up the mission downtown Athens, we had a prophet who came and he took me aside and he said, now, I want you to know something. And this is a word from the Lord to you that you cannot be led by the needs of all of these people coming through this door but that you are to be led by the Spirit of God. And that's the way Jesus was. There were people that were that came to him constantly. They followed him. The multitudes followed him. And Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Okay, so we had one of these widows then had a lot of money, and but she also... Uh, developed all of these friends and relatives that came to her with tremendous needs. Right. And they sucked out all of the money she had. She wound up with nothing. Now, the other widow also had a lot of money. She was wise. She went and got a counselor, a financial counselor. And uh, that man tied up her money so that uh, all of those roaches, family roaches, couldn't come and, and steal it and carry it away. And so she invested her money. She invested in a business, a small business. And so uh, uh, they just couldn't get it. They couldn't get it. She, she showed wisdom. She followed the mm -hmm. wisdom of the Lord, not to just let, when you get a, a nest egg like that, uh, and there was a reason that, she, that they got it, because they had lost their husband. They had lost uh, the, these men that were, uh, earning uh, money for and, and supporting the family. And, and so this money was supposed to replace uh, that uh, uh, income earning uh, ability that their husband had to, to help them get by. And, and so it wasn't, a, it wasn't extravagant, but it was a lot of money. And one woman lost it all because her relatives uh, uh, I kept asking, we're just continually coming. And so she'd help this one, help that one, help that one. And pretty soon all the money was gone. It was amazing how quickly it all left. It was gone. And the other woman got it tied up because she was with a, a financial counselor that showed her how protected. to protect it. She got it protected. She protect, it was protected. And, and she continues to live on it today. Okay. So now one, and so this is an important point. So we have to, uh, develop a strategy for uh, to protect it, a and uh, a good way to protect it is Psalm 91, mm -hmm. and uh, this shows you how to begin protecting. So as you're growing, as your territory is growing, as you're gaining more authority, as you're gaining more, more finances, and you're gaining uh, all of these things. Uh, what do you need to do? Well, run into the presence of God. That's what Isaiah Amen. 91. And then no, there's no, going to be Psalm a, 91. I'm sorry, Psalm 91. And then you're going to find 
a refuge and a strong tower. So read these first couple mm, of verses. He loves the Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so this psalm is a very rich psalm. And you know, we can spend much time in here and really over the rest of your life you need to be uh going over psalm 91 over and over again but the, in essence it just starts here with these first couple of verses that when we run into the presence of the lord we stay in his presence then he's going to be our refuge and our strong tower but then you can look at the other ver other verses in psalm 91 and the, when the plagues come and when the arrows will fall uh or fly uh, by night and pestilence and all of those things there's still protection there why where is that protection in the presence of, of the lord. lord amen so how amen. how do we protect ourselves as we grow and as we move forward uh then and as then we go into new territory we've got to have that protection of the lord to be in his uh in his presence see you have a new identity that you're moving into and that's your future. That you're being conformed more and more mm -hmm. into the image of Jesus Christ. And, and so that's who God says you are becoming. You are becoming that. And you need to remember that. And so if we only focus on the past, if we only focus on the past and all the problems and everything everybody's done to us, and I know uh, people have done uh, evil things to all of us, mm -hmm. and he's, uh, to you and to me. He's done people and the devil himself and uh, the people that he's worked through have done evil things to you. But if we focus on the past and focus on our failures, we won't see who we are becoming in Jesus Christ. Mm, amen, we won't amen. see that God has a good future for us. And so we need to walk, not as somebody looking back in the rear view mirror where you've come from, but where you're going in Christ Jesus and stay right there in the presence of the Lord. And that'll put a shield of protection around you, a, a refuge and a strong tower. Okay. Now there's one other verse I want Sherry to talk about. Then I'm bringing this message to a conclusion, but it's, we need to put a wall when, when we have new territory and we're expanding and are expanding in our authority and in our influence and uh, prospering and plan on prospering. Don't plan on going down, but plan on going up. Amen. With the Amen. Lord Amen. Because you're the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. And, and God wants a better future for you than you're in right now. And, and, but we have to build walls and gates around mm, the territory mm, that mm, God gives mm. us. So let's read this out of Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. Uh, verse 18, it says, call your walls salvation. Hallelujah. That's what's around you. You have a wall of protection, and that is the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then it says, and call your gates praise. Hallelujah. You know, we have gates. We have, we have our eyes are gates. Our mouth is a gate. Our ears are gates. Uh, our heart is a gate. Our mind, our is, mind a gate. is a gate. Hallelujah. And so when we, when our gates are full of praise to the Lord, whoo, hallelujah, then that provides security. That establishes uh, who we are uh, in our walk with the Lord. And, and praise the name of Jesus. When we go into new territory, we go in with the Lord. He's around us. His walls are salvation and our gates are praise. Oh, and so we go in with those, those mighty um, weapons, if you will, uh, that we're, we're surrounded by salvation and are in our mouth is the praises of the Lord. You know, King David said, the praise of the Lord will continually be in my mouth. You know, and, and you cannot be praising the Lord and speaking uh, garbage out of it at the same time. It doesn't work that way. You're either doing one or the other. Oh, hallelujah. 
And so I don't know about you, but I take I take a hold of that thought right there that I'm either speaking the praises of the Lord or I'm speaking and that's what it is. It's garbage. It's garbage and it doesn't produce anything. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so we're saying you are going to enlarge your territory and we need to have security around it. We, because just like the example I gave you on those two women, there were all kinds of attacks against one of them's finances. Really, the mm -hmm. attacks came against both of them, but one of them had enough sense and wisdom from the Lord to protect her money. The other one didn't, and it was all gone very, very quickly. Uh, she was down to nothing uh, with the income. And, and, but the other, other one who protected it had wisdom. So she set up security around our territory. And that's the same that we all need to do. We need to put uh, security around it. And, and the first point I wanted to make on it was that you do that by staying in the presence of the Lord. Amen. He's going to show Amen. you, he's going to show you uh, the enemies and, and uh, where uh, people are going to come and try to take away what God has intended for you. And the other, the other point I wanted to make was that we have to say, said because it's, the verse says, call your walls. And so when you take new territory, whether it be in finances or authority or health or uh, whatever area mm -hmm. it is, uh, then, then you establish a wall of security around it. How do you do it? By calling yourself, uh, there's a wall around it. By saying it, you need to be active. And, and the salvation, mm -hmm. the wall of salvation is God's doing. He, he's the one that does it, but you're the one releasing it, or releasing a wall. You, you know you've taken uh, some... Uh, you have more authority. You have more power. You need to put a shield of protection around it. Begin declaring that God has put a wall of salvation around it. But then, then there's openings in the walls, and that's where the gates are. And Sherry mm -hmm. talked about uh, some of the gates. But if we don't praise, see, they're going to continue to be openings in the wall. Oh, hallelujah. Those hallelujah. walls are gates, and we're the ones taking care of the gates. We're the ones responsible for our gates. Well, what we see, uh, what we hear, what, we, what, where we go. Be careful with little eyes, what you see. You know, we sing this with the children. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is watching over all. Be <laughs> careful, little eyes, what you see. So, so we have to put close up the gates and we do that with praising God. You know, we mm -hmm. enter the gates with thanksgiving. Amen. And we, hallelujah. Oh, into the courts, the courts with, with praise. praise. Amen. And when we go in with praise, then there's that gate is closed up. Well, we don't want the devil to come. We don't hallelujah. Want, we don't want people to come in and harm us and take away what God has provided for us. Uh because well, when we do that with praise, we secure things with praise. So I just want to just summarize today and just highlight that, that God wants you to increase in every area of your life. And um, Jesus came to destroy, to do away, uh, undo. The, undo the works of the devil, destroy the works of the devil. So anything that's happened in your past, Jesus came to undo all of that, the works of the works of the devil that, uh, uh, that have harassed you and followed you. Um, be clear from them today. We sever those uh, things that have come in the past and the things in your heart that has caused you to look back, the wounds, mm -hmm. the abuse, and the misuse uh, that would cause you to look back because you have a good future and, and look towards that and move into that new territory that God has for you because he wants to increase you. Amen. Thank you so much Amen. for being here Amen. today. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Amen. We're going to open up the floor in just a moment for your, to hear uh, from you and hear your comments. Um, I, this is a wonderful message for all of us that God is increasing us. This is the year of increase. This is the year of releasement of finances and wealth. Uh, that's, um, you know, that's what the Lord said uh, to all of us on the first day of the year uh, during the prophetic conference that 
uh, there were things that he was releasing to the body of Christ. And I believe that he's re releasing more authority. He's releasing more power to us. And also he's releasing more finances to us. But as he releases those blessings, then it is our responsibility to, like Brother Fred said, uh, to protect it and to make sure that the enemy does not come and steal, kill, and destroy uh, what God is doing with us. Amen. Be a and good steward, be a of, good what steward of, what, of what he gives us. You know, I was talking to a lady the other day, and I'm going to say this because I feel like uh, that many of you are sowers, and you, you love to sow, you love to give. And as you receive back, uh, from the Lord, you know, it says, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall uh, men give back into your bosom. Uh, as you give, that you do not uh, eat up all your seed uh, that you get back. That when God gives, releases uh, to you, then you uh, be led by the Spirit on how you utilize the seed that's coming back to you and you don't you don't eat up all your seed and uh, what does that mean that means that you know you may uh you may have needs yourself but when you receive back from the lord and this is part of protection uh, of what god is releasing to you Good. that you give to the lord what it belongs to him uh you you meet uh your need but then you uh, you save some of that seed to sow back, to sow again. And you just keep on sowing, you keep on sowing. And as you keep on sowing, then the Lord will, you can never outgive God. Hallelujah.